Praise the Lord. Brethren, I welcome you to today's family devotional. God bless you. Uh, I want to thank you for staying with us on your uh, channel here. My name is Pastor Yemi Amogoyega. Uh, it's time for us to share the word of God again. Um, before then, let's take one or two songs. Amen. Only wola oko ni bata fari jesu. Hallelujah. Only wola mako ni bata fari jesu. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything. You have done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For everything you have done. Please remember to share these messages across. Subscribe to our channel. Share the messages. Press the like button. Pass your comments. Press the notification button so that whenever we upload new videos, you'll be the first to uh, know. So, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you once again for this opportunity which you have granted for us to learn before you this day. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in our lives all the time, for your provision, for your protection. Thank you for all the works of your hands. Thank you, Lord. For everything you've done here on earth and in your heavenly places. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you because you care so much for us. Accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Thank you most importantly for your word that you give to us as a guide, as a counseling, as a as an instruction or that instructs that guides that you know teaches us all righteousness. Accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father. This moment, we remember our sins. Please forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we are also forgiving those who sins against us in the mighty name of Jesus. Please, Heavenly Father, today come and speak with us. Oh, what we need to know that will lead us to righteousness today. Please grant, uh, tell us such things so that and grant us the heart of understanding and the preparedness to take to your word and do them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, today in particular, let it be a day which I forever remember for good. Let there be wonderful testimonies in our lives in a positive way in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. I pray for my brethren who are listening to the sound of my voice now that whatever it is that are in their lives, Heavenly Father, that may hinder them from making heaven. Please forgive them. And they will forgive me also in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray also if there are challenges they are facing now that appears on someone table, please, Heavenly Father, oh, reverse the irreversible in their lives. Let their prayers be answered in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right now we're going to take our Bible passage from the book of Matthew chapter 25. God bless you. We will stop at the comfortable place. Amen. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessel with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumped and sleep. And at and Slumbered and sleep. And at midnight a cry was heard Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Mm -hmm. But the wife answered, saying, No, let there be, let there should not be enough for us. Lest there should not be enough for us. Okay, please and you, But you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other, 
virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man mm -hmm. is coming. Mm -hmm. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man mm -hmm. traveling to a far country, mm -hmm. who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. Mm -hmm. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Mm -hmm. Then he who had received the five talents mm -hmm. went and made them with them, mm -hmm. and made another five talents. Mm -hmm. And likewise he who had received two gain two more also. Yes. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground, mm -hmm. and hid his lost money. Mm -hmm. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled account with them. Mm -hmm. So he who had received five talents came mm -hmm. and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you rule over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also, he also, who had received two talents. Praise yes. the living Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, we give glory to God. The topic for today, please read the remaining yourself because of our recording time. Um, the message we just heard is about the ten virgins as well as the people that were given talents. One was given one, another one, two, the other one, five. And whereas the, while the people with higher number of talents multiplied them, the one that has one started giving reasons why he could not. He said, well, he hit it on the ground and so on and so forth so that it would not be lost. But the owner told, the giver told him that, sorry, you would have made more, more, more talents, you would have made more money or give me, get, gotten interest just like the other people. And he suffered a setback. As the Lord God Almighty lives, you and I, we shall never be a fool in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, the, the story of the virgins also you know, let me just say that the topic of this message is do not be a fool. Do not be a fool. And let me also start now by saying, blessed are those who plan their lives. Spiritually as well as secularly. I looked at the pattern of people who lived a successful life, good, that recorded good success in this life. I saw that they are people that really planned their lives very well. They planned it spiritually, they planned it um, in terms of uh, the goals they set to achieve in life. Let me give you an example. The people that were um, Envying or uh, worshipping today or hero worshipping today uh, or that we tag rich men today or people that are, uh, you know, completely out of poverty, they lack nothing good and so on and so forth. Let me tell you, their parents had a vision, a vision of a better tomorrow for them. And if you look at them, they were the people that their parents in those days, days labored to send to school. And then one, then, then, or number one, those that their parents, not everybody this time, that their parents sent to, I mean, introduced to God. If you check it today, I've not done the checking, but I believe that most of the people that are successful today, they are people that, you know, they serve God, it somehow, because you will tell me that after all there are people that didn't serve God and so on. You are looking at it from religious point of view. You are looking at it from the point of view of those who carry the Bible and were 
always attending programs and so on and so forth. I want to tell you, if you want to base it on that, you will see that, in fact, you will not like Christianity. Because you will say, ah, many people who are in Christendom, they are not at all well off in terms of making it, in terms of uh, even living a good life or making money or doing everything. But all the same, there are some of them who did not even carry the Bible, the parents, who, but whom God... Abraham did not carry the Bible during his time. Amen. But he had his... He was a good father. He was looking for greener pasture. He left the, the place where he was, a place where things were not going well. And he heard that in the land of Canaan, which is like our Lagos today, or US, or, uh, or UK, many of them thought that, you know, I mean, he himself thought that, look, I cannot continue to just be here. I have to make a change. And he decided to move towards the direction where he felt, you know, life would be better. And along the line, not that he read the Bible, not that he was even praying or doing anything, but he has that godly mind, fear of God in him, even though it, it, Christianity was not as it is today, that people even tell you, people even tell you, oh, accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody, but he's, he was just in his heart. And he was, he was heading towards a place that would be good for him and for his children, for his family. And so when you see people now trying to say, okay, I want to travel out of the country, I want to move to other places for better reasons and so on and so forth. Don't see them as people who are discontented and are just, uh, um, you know, living a shadowy life. No, if God gives us that vision, I mean, instead of courage that they should go and that God will help give them favor, just as he did to Abraham. You know that along the line, his father, Abraham's father, Terah, died on the way. And yet, the journey that Terah started, that he could not finish, the Lord now spoke with um, Abraham directly to go ahead with the plans that his father had for him. And then they to go ahead and begin to continue on that journey. And the rest is history. We know that today, God began to lead Abraham. So it doesn't matter whether you, let's say, whether you have accepted Christ, or not, if your mind is good and you are you are aiming towards something good, I know that along the line, as the Lord chose uh, Abraham and spoke with him, or if your parents had started a good uh, uh, pattern for you, and but you don't even understand, but you're just your, your I mean, one of them is that your children, your parents, just sending you to school, pay your school fees, and then you know, counseling you to. Make sure you're a good boy or girl and make sure you don't, you know, live a wayward life so that, you know, tomorrow your tomorrow will be better. you see that, that along that journey, even if you are not a Christian yet, you know that God can call you and take you to that promised land that your father and mother contemplated for you. That was exactly what happened in Abraham's life. We give glory to God. He is a good success to do, not just a success but a good source because from his lineage came Christ Jesus. And today is a man that is blessed, blessed in the true sense of it. So what is this telling us? These two parables, you know, Christ will always speak in parables, but the parable would almost be as clear as literary uh, matters. And the Lord, you know, the virgins, the, the ten virgins, I mean, they were preparing, just like you and I today, we are being prepared to meet Christ on the second coming. Whether we are physically dead before then or whether we are still alive. I know one of the questions you'll be asking, those who want to, fake, to say the Bible is fake, is okay, that Christ said in Genesis, in uh, Matthew 24, that um, this generation, this generation, the generation that he was in there, will not go past until Christ, you know, before Christ comes. Because those are the skeptics who say, ah, no, but this one didn't come to pass. The generation of man is a continuous uh, thing. And we are still in a generation, and a generation will be 
forever until Christ comes. So it's not uh, literally referring to that or the existence of the people that existed at that very point. People that will always exist. That's it. So, brethren, Christ is still calling upon you today to prepare yourself to make heaven with him. You know, that's, that's point number one. Nobody knows when he would come. Then also, you too, as you are in this world, plan for your tomorrow so that your tomorrow will be better. You know, I said it earlier. Those of them whose parents or whom God himself appeared to or God gave the proper visions to plan their lives, they ended up well in this world. Okay? So it is. If you plan your life, because there are two good successes you need to attain. I mean, but one is better than the other. The one is that compared to eternity. You will have to make heaven reign with Christ on the second coming. The second one is the, this world that we are in. If we are wise, that's why we say don't be a fool. If you are wise, you will plan for your tomorrow. You will, you know, go to your school, you won't drop out. You will, and then when you get to your school, you know that. Uh, and you begin to work, you come out with flying colors in your school, and then you begin to work. You need to uh, plan for your the days that you won't work again. When I know today we said 60 years as a retirement age, but even honestly speaking, if one is because uh, early good success, you could retire at 30, 40, even 50 before the 60th. Year. The 60 years limit is to force you out. Why do you wait until you are forced out? I give glory to God. That's why during my own time, I honestly, I stayed 45 years for my own retirement, but eventually I retired at, voluntarily at 51. I was still able to do one or two things for myself even before 60. And today, by God's grace, I'm going to 65. I may not say, oh, I didn't have a fat bank account on this. And I, no, 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 that's not success. Good success is not measured that way. Today I know that I'm in Christ. I'm so happy that God willing, my future, my eternity is hopeful. I am expectant of, uh, of living, of, of praying with my Father, with Christ Jesus. You know, I'm joined here with Christ. And on the surface of this earth, I thank God. From when I was young, I had rejected poverty. I am able to feed myself to God be the glory today. And the generation after me, that is the next generation after me, the opportunities I didn't have, God gave to them. Because one, they, they were able to go to their schools without, uh, you know, they were not... They are not like us, whom God just delivered, you know, from the hand of illiteracy or ignorance, but, you know, who had to struggle, struggle, struggle. But in their own case, they were able to do theirs on the platter of gold. You know, they went to their own schools, they went again, they went there and came back, you know, with uh, flying colors. And today God is, you know, forget about what is happening. Oh, employment opportunities and that are not uh, very few. But God is still God, and He is going to make a way for them. I know that they are surely, in all ramifications, going to be better than me and their, and their parents. I mean, but what I found difficult to do, God made it easier for them because God has given me that vision to reject poverty. That time we ate whatever we found, but today we eat whatever we, we like to eat. Not, in fact, today now. Uh, to God be the glory also. You see, if you plan your life very well, in, in all ramifications, God is with you. At, after 60 years, you don't need so much heavy food, the junk that we have eaten in the past. But if, I, if one is not spiritual enough, or God, one is not disciplined enough, you think that, oh, this is time for me to sit and eat and don't eat junks. And that uh, today, now, I cherish fasting more than eating. In fact, to me, now, my belief is eat like maybe three days a week, honestly. And has another insight. So when they say fast, it's not, I thank God today, it's not for lack of food, but it's for choosing to live right and to enjoy excellent health. And to God be the glory, and God has blessed me with that too. 
I am not living a blind life. That, oh, eat, eat, eat until you just eat yourself to death. But today, God is making it possible. It's okay, son, you have done well. So do your uh, eat now to live, not live to eat. <laughs> just live what is needful, what is good, and take the proper, the best care of yourself. I give glory to God. All the goals that I set in all these directions, they are working for me. So how about you? Plan your your future when you are young. Plan who I gave an essay topic to some young children last this last Sunday. I said, Go on, write for me. Everything you want to become in life. I don't know. Give that title to your to your child as or to your children as essay. Let them tell you what they want to become at 20, at 30, at 40, at 50, and you will see the vision of what God wants them to be. Whatever they want to be, as you write them all. And I said, if we just give it just only the younger ones, like that are less than 12 years, I said, give me six pages. The ones that are older than 12, I said, please, you must go ahead and give me 10 pages of what you, everything you want to become in life. And this will set them thinking and I'm guiding them to say, okay, this is how to think, this is what to do, you know who you are now, and so on and so forth. So there must be proper planning. The same way I'm doing that in terms of you know, secular thing, and telling them, okay, look, you have to start using your talent for God in, in the church, and you have to also be reading the Bible, we are studying the Bible together, I think I will post one of the Bible studies that we did, recently. we are reviewing the Bible page by page, you know, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, telling them, even in these their early days, that this is how the Bible, everything God is saying, is applicable to your life. And they are obeying. So tomorrow now, these children will not... In fact, that essay alone is talking about how they are planning their lives spiritually because they must attach to God who will guide them. And then they are on how to plan it secularly because they must think of whatever they want to become. If not, many will go through life without even knowing where they are going. Let that not be your question. Don't be a fool. A fool does not plan anything. A fool even catches a game and cannot roast it. And a fool even gets it roasted and cannot lift it to his mouth. And I mean, a lazy man is a fool. Bible says in uh, Proverbs 1-7 that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And fools, despite a fool does not want to hear anything about God. A fool does not want to hear anything about don't be lazy or be hardworking or or let us plan our lives. But uh, a fool does not even want to hear anything. But a fool is, you know, I pray that somebody will be fully uh, uh, be there always to maybe their parents or their families or brothers or whatever. Or one but person that divided by or the other. They even don't remember God that created them. So don't be a fool. Please plan. Use the talents that the Lord has given to you to do the best for yourself as you can. Use it in the house of God. Use it to make money. Use it to multiply every good thing. You know, the Bible says in Genesis 1.28, be, I mean, it says, be fruitful, multiply, and dominate. You are expected to dominate. And God is ready to bless all the work of your hands. Deuteronomy 28, 10-14. And in fact, the entire Deuteronomy 28 from 1 to 14. And God is ready to bless you, the work of your hand. And number three, also remember that Romans uh, 12, 11 says, I mean, work and pray, not slothful in business, fervent in prayers. So the Lord will help us in Jesus. Don't be a fool, a fool, my brother. Don't be a fool, my children. Don't be a fool, my sister. God will help you plan your, your, your life. Plan your education, make sure you complete it. Plan your career, make sure during your career period you invest very well that you have a, a good, you know, pack of assets for your old age and that you can take good care of yourself and, you know, while you are still praying that, Lord, let me accomplish them. Make sure you plan for your heaven by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior now so that the, the, the longest time of your life will be spent in eternity in heaven with Christ, not with, uh, not in hell. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to appreciate you again for this 
wonderful message this morning. Accept our hands even in Jesus' name. Almighty Father, I pray for my brethren who are listening to me now. Mine is to speak, yours is to touch their hearts to have understanding. Father, I pray this message, let it be a seed that will germinate in their hearts and grow to uh, fullness and yield positive results in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. I too that I'm speaking about, let me end well in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that, particularly for children, please, brethren, play this message for your children, oh Lord God Almighty. The children that will be listening to this message, please open them up for a better tomorrow. Let them have even greater understanding now for listening to this message in the mighty name of Let them glorify your holy name at the end of the day, that it not come wander through this life aimlessly and those who have gone away astray, O oh Lord, help them to retrace their steps, to know you and to plan their lives well. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please, you can see now that we need to share this message. And then you need to subscribe to this channel because God is using us and will continue to use us in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Subscribe. Share.